Janome. Hi, I'm Sherry Safaldi Morrill, and welcome to Whole Circle Studio. I love designing and piecing quilt blocks using foundation paper piecing. This includes sewing sections and pieces of all sizes, ranging from large to tiny. If you foundation paper pieced before, you know that this technique is fabulous because it allows us to get precise results. Taking this te technique a step further and piecing small or tiny sections enables us to get wonderful details and even curved shapes in our piecing. Tiny paper piecing may feel a bit intimidating, but with a few tips and if you remember, it's just like piecing larger sections, you'll be on your way in no time. Today I'll be demonstrating how we can get a fairly smooth circle simply by stitching a number of straight lines around a shape. The more sections or pieces we have, the more detail we'll get. Shapes and details this small would be nearly impossible or really challenging with most other piecing techniques. Another benefit of tiny foundation paper piecing is it requires small pieces of fabric, so we can use up those scraps we have in our stash or use leftover fabric from other parts of our foundation paper piecing pattern. Let's get our machine ready to paper piece. Start your project with a new needle. A sharp needle will pierce the paper easier, especially helpful with tiny piecing. Sewing through paper dulls needles, so be sure to change out your needle after you paper piece and before you start your next piecing or quilting project. Good visibility is key with all piecing, but especially tiny piecing. Experiment with the feet options on your sewing machine. I base my foot depending on the lighting and frankly what type of sewing mood I'm in. These are a few feet that work well for me while I'm paper piecing on my Janome 6700P. This here is the zigzag foot A. I could see really well around this area when the needle drops down. Sometimes I'll use my open toe satin stitch foot and it has a little bit less visibility but sometimes I'll use my quarter inch foot seam foot. Be sure to check out your manual and options available for your machine. You may find a different foot that works best for you. Consult your sewing machine manual for what your foot pressure dial should be set to. For tiny foundation paper piecing on my Janome, I sometimes find that I like to raise the foot a bit more than what's suggested since I'm sewing over a number of layers, including paper and usually multiple seams. If you're finding your piecing isn't feeding through your machine as easy as you'd like, adjust the foot pressure dial. I could see here on my display what it's set to. I use a short stitch length of about a 1.5 when foundation paper piecing. These small stitches allow for secure piecing and they also perforate the paper, making it easier to remove at the end. For tiny foundation paper piecing, I sometimes even make my stitch length a bit shorter, like a 1.3 or even a 1.2. Since the lines we're sewing on for tiny paper piecing are so short, the smaller stitches make it a bit easier to start and stop where we need to. Be sure to use a good quality 50 weight or thinner thread when foundation paper piecing. This will help alleviate the bulk in your seams, especially helpful with tiny foundation paper piecing as you often have a lot of seams close to one another and seam allowances that are overlapping. I like to use Aurafil 50 weight cotton in either a neutral or a color that matches my fabric. A good quality thread will also leave minimal lint in your machine. A clean machine is a healthy machine. Let's start tiny foundation paper piecing. There are many ways to approach tiny piecing and I'm going to show you what works best for me. If you need additional help or are new to foundation paper piecing, be sure to check out the free tutorial mini class on the Whole Circle Studio blog. The link is also listed below this video. I manually insert my needle at the beginning of the line I'm going to sew on. This line is super short, so I probably will only need a few stitches to complete it. Be sure to set your machine to a slow stitching setting.
This is key with getting good results with tiny paper piecing. Otherwise, it's easy to get carried away with your stitches. Even though our stitch length is short, I like to back stitch one or sometimes it turns into two times at the beginning and at the end of my line to ensure my stitching is secure. This is especially helpful when we get to removing the paper. You can also use a locking stitch. My Janome has a locking button that when pressed will sew several stitches in place, will pause, and then will continue sewing forward. When I get to the end of the line, I press the reverse key and the machine will sew several locking stitches or stitches in place and then will stop sewing automatically. I use the thread cutter button which automatically cuts my threads for me. I am left with some thread tails, but I typically don't mind. If you're using a dark thread with a light fabric or you like to keep the backs of your blocks super neat, go ahead and use a pair of thread snips to tidy up your thread ends. Some quilters who foundation paper piece like to trim their seam allowance to 1 8 of an inch, especially if there's tiny pieces or where there's a lot of overlapping seams. I tend to stick to a quarter of an inch seam allowance just to make sure my seams are nice and secure, but do whatever is best for you. Once you have all your paper sections filled up with fabric, and if your pattern calls for it, your paper pieces are joined together, it's then time to take your paper out. There are some subtly different ways to make this easier. For tiny pieces, I like to sort of hold my block and try to punch out a middle section. I'll then use my fingernails or a pair of tweezers to remove the paper. Another strategy I use is start on the outside of the block and tear away the paper along the seam. After doing this, I can usually get the next section out a bit easier. I try to get all the paper out, but if I'm left with a bit of residue, I'm usually okay with that. Be sure to double check under those seam allowances for paper. Thanks for watching and have fun with tiny foundation paper piecing.